As I've heard it said before, there are three types of people in this world. People who make things happen, people who watch things happen, and people who don't know what the heck is going on. Which one of these people are you going to be in the run-up to the proverbial SHTF? Let's talk about it. All right, so before I forget, let's turn this on here. There we go. Now we're back in business. Look, I've made five blue strip videos and I'm exhausted. Okay, five blue strip videos in a row. If you don't know, I have a color coding system on the channel. If you see a video and it has a blue strip Canadian prepper logo on it, that's usually a practical how-to gear review, a video which is usually very thoroughly well-researched, which takes me a lot of time, energy, and oftentimes money to make. And I'm just completely exhausted and I gotta phone one in today because I'm not only exhausted because of that, but because of what the markets have been doing. I'm sure some of you who are invested in this, that, or whatever are realizing that maybe this is the big shearing of the retail sheep that we've all been waiting for. Everybody's wondering, when is the crash going to happen? When is the crash going to happen? And, uh, you know, I think that you know, every time I come out with a video like this and say that I think the crash is going to happen, the Fed miraculously steps in. So I'm hoping that maybe that's what's going to happen here. And uh, I'm hoping that me making this video is going to uh, unjinx the whole situation. But who knows? Maybe now that I've said that, I've jinxed it, and we really are going to start down the staircase. But it seems like right now we're at that point. You know what? When in those movies where the car is going off the cliff, but it just stops right before it falls off the cliff, and it's like teetering on the edge, and there's like a bird or something that, or a cat. It, usually this happens in comedy movies. Every comedy movie this happens, okay? Uh, a bird f flies and lands on the car and counterbalances it, and then, you know, the person's in the car, and they're like freaking out, and they're like, don't move, don't move. And uh, that's the Fed. The bird's the Fed, and we are like about to nosedive into the great chasm of reality and I don't know when it's gonna happen but we, we could be seeing that right now you have all of these economic factors things that I'm only beginning to fully comprehend you know um, uh, bonds and the, the yield curve and inflation rates and interest rates and just uh, trying to comprehend exactly you know how that factors in how the hedge funds factor in and the algorithms that trade factor in cryptocurrency precious metals all these things what does it all mean gdp you know macroeconomics i think we're all getting a crash course in macroeconomics in the last two years i've been investing before that but i was mostly doing value investing with a little bit of spec you know a little bit of tesla but now i tell you it, it starts to feel like the crash is coming now if you look at how the great depression happened it doesn't happen all at once you see what we had happen in march of 2020 that was a fairly rapid crash but every day after the dow dipped or the nasdaq dipped there was a, cat, a dead cat bounce, okay? So we would take two steps backwards and then we would get a little bit of relief, one step forwards and everybody would think, okay, maybe it's coming back. And then the next day, you know, down the roller coaster, sometimes I visualize a roller coaster that we're all on right now with this economy and uh, it's down the roller coaster again and when are we gonna hit the bottom of this ride, okay? This is what happens, it's a downward staircase. So it's like a ball bouncing down the stairs. That's how a crash looks. But there's also a more protracted type of crash. This is what happened after 1929. Now in 1929, I can't remember, was it Black Thursday or Black Monday or whatever day? There was one day when there was this massive sell-off. Because what happened in 1929 before the Great Depression is everybody was borrowing money to put it in the market because the interest that they were paying on those loans was less than what they were making. So say you borrow hundred dollars from the bank and you go put that into the stock market and the next week that's worth hundred and ten dollars but you only owe the bank 102 because they only wanted two dollars interest well you just made eight bucks so why just borrow a hundred let's borrow thousands and thousands so that's 
kind of similar to what's been going on, but there's also some bubble components, and I'm not even going to begin to try to comprehend it. Okay, so back to what happened in 1929. On October 24th, Black Thursday, the market crashed, okay? And a few days after that, one of these big rich tycoons said, you know what, I'm going to try to get the markets going again. So he went and bought a huge bunch of uh, uh, shares of several different companies, and that kind of jump-started the market a little bit. But from that point forward, it was just a bunch of dead cap bounces. The market kept on diving because everybody was over-leveraged. Everybody borrowed all this money because they thought they were going to make big money in the markets, and there was all this panic selling that continued to ensue thereafter, and things did not correct themselves for around 10 years after that until WW2. Now, is the same thing going to replicate itself again? I'm not sure. What do you guys think in the comment section below? I do think, getting to the practical meat and potatoes of this video, that there's a good possibility that we may have crossed that financial Rubicon and are going to be descending now into that depression-like territory. If you look at the NASDAQ in particular, okay, it, it's starting to look like maybe the party's over. But then again, then again, we just don't know because I make these videos and sure enough, a week after I make a video like this, some you know, completely unrealistic factor comes into the market and people start buying stocks again and everybody thinks the party's going on again. But that's what's kind of been happening so far. We've had the big downs and then we had a bounce and then we've had some more downs. Now we're having another little bounce. Actually, no, we're still in one of the downs. So I'm expecting maybe tomorrow we'll get a little half-ass bounce, but the day after that, you know, it's gonna keep going downwards. Now, if that keeps happening, we got big, 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 big problems. If you have a very weak dollar and you have a very weak uh, stock market, you have this massive sell-off in equities, you have a absolutely relentless Fed that is trying to keep the party going as long as possible. And every single economist seems to have a different perspective on what's going on right now. Very few are saying that this is the big one, that this is the big crash. This is the where the $30 trillion known government debt and all of the other derivatives associated with that are finally going to just pop and everything is just gonna go to hell in a handbasket and crime is gonna run rapid in the streets and the cost of food is gonna skyrocket and you know we're gonna enter another war because what else is there to do when your economy is crashing? Nobody's really saying that, but remember, these black swan events and corrections only happen when you least expect them to happen. Otherwise, if we all predicted that it was going to happen, then it would never happen. If everybody's expecting a correction, and a correction will never happen. It only, by definition, can happen when everybody thinks we're in green mode. That's when they happen. So that's why, you know, that as the saying goes, be greedy when people are fearful and fearful when people are greedy. And uh, for the last month or so, I've seen the car teetering on the cliff. You know, I've seen it. I've seen the bird, you know, flap its wings and, and tease that it was going to jump off and then get back on there and apply its weight a little bit more. And there's this sigh of relief and, you know, and everybody thinks, but everybody knows it's got to happen sometime. And I think in this last few weeks, with the market volatility, I think people are realizing, okay, this is real. The shit has to come back down to earth at some point. Maybe not so extreme as the tech bubble was in 2000, but things are going to come back down to earth and it's probably going to royally suck. I'm just trying to figure out what other black swan type events are going to emerge moving forward here. I got another video coming out tomorrow talking about that particular thing. But what do you guys think is going on with the markets right now? I, I'm getting a little nervous, I must say. For the last couple of weeks, I've been getting a little nervous. And even the crypto markets, you know, the crypto markets seem to be tracking the NASDAQ in a lot of ways. Not entirely, but, you know, if you look at a graph of Bitcoin and the NASDAQ over the last month and you overlaid them, they're pretty similar. So this tells me that Bitcoin and many cryptos are not a asset hedge 
like gold is just yet because gold, although it's down a bit, it's still the volatility there is not nearly as much as these more speculative plays like Bitcoin and uh, the stock market. So maybe Peter Schiff is finally going to have his day. What is that quote I heard Peter Schiff predicted 10 out of the last one <laughs> recessions or something like that? Maybe he's going to finally be right because you know he's got to be right sometime because you know the bubble has to burst sometime, but it's going to burst when we all least expect it. Now, our intuition has been telling us all along that we know that something has to come in 2021. I mean, the Fed is really going to have to massage this economy in ways that would impress the most astute and well-seasoned of Chinese acupuncturists. The Fed is going to have to work magic in order to keep this economy afloat. What I'm learning about uh, inflation rates and bond treasury yields and uh, what's the other interest rates and how these three things interact tells me that they are going to have to pull a lot of strings. They're going to have to do a lot of manipulation. And now you have this whole GameStop, Wall Street bet variable coming into play where you have Main Street who finally has some way to do battle with the Wall Street shorts. And that creates a whole other realm of instability because you see what that triggered with GameStop was all these hedge funds, they lost a lot of money. And as a result of losing a lot of money, that drained money from the rest of the markets. And so, you know, a lot of people, a lot of retail investors lost a lot of money as well. And that drained a lot of money, that rerouted money that's now in GameStop from other equities, among other things, and just the people's pocketbooks. And probably, to be quite frank, it probably a lot of what went to uh, doobies and video games for all the GameStop Wall Street bets crowd. And that's the same thing with crypto as well. This big Bitcoin, I don't want to call it a bubble because I don't want to offend the Bitcoin boys out there. But all that money from Bitcoin, it came from somewhere and it came from the rest of the economy. It's a black hole for the economy. This money that is pumping into Bitcoin, even though it's under a trillion dollars, that's still enough to move the needle, to get the algorithms to get the needle moving on that seismograph or whatever the hell it is, whatever metaphor you want to use, and start triggering various sell-offs, which have ripple effects throughout the market. Now, again, not an economist. Don't take this. It's not financial advice, blah, blah, blah. But it does seem, it does seem that we may have finally gone over the, the hump and now it's time to come down. All the people who've lost their jobs, all the people who've had their disposable income cut down to size over the past year. It's already been an SHDF situation for you, whether you've lived in Texas, whether you uh, lived through the fires, through the riots, the whatever, you know? I mean, for many people, the shit has already hit the fan. But now, that whole Wall Street, that whole K-shaped recovery is starting to level off. And I think this is when, you know, you start to see the middle class possibly take a dive as well. And who knows how the government is going to step in and who knows what sort of global incidents are going to start to emerge as a result of increased austerity. Because look, the government's got to pay off all these bonds, okay? And the only way they're going to do that is by raising taxes. And if you're going to raise taxes, people aren't necessarily going to be that happy with that. But it's something that has to be done. Because remember, when the Fed is printing money, when they are lending, not spending, they're doing that off the back of the taxpayer. You are the one who has to pay the interest. Okay, that's why when you go to the U.S. Debt Clock homepage, there's that one little field where it says, uh, proportion of debt for every person, debt per capita. And it's something like crazy amount of over $100,000 now, easy, that you owe in addition to your mortgage, in addition to your credit card payments. And if you don't pay that, guess what? It's World War III because countries aren't going to be too happy when all of their universally accepted global reserve currency is suddenly worth less than Toilet paper, what is going to happen then? I don't know. Like I say, you know, there's times during the day when I think I got it figured out. 
most of the day i'm kind of just watching it all happen and at the end of the day i'm taking it up the pipe like everybody else let me know what you guys think in the comment section what can we expect in the next six months with respect to the economy because that is really the the nexus of all the other stuff which could potentially go down as a result of that ship tanking what do you think is going to transpire in the next six months the next year with respect to the markets because these are unprecedented times i mean it's been unprecedented for the last 15 months but now we're in an unprecedented post-pandemic phase where nobody knows what's going to happen i mean we call it post-pandemic but we probably are going to see you know more mutations and this that whatever emerge but we're really in uncharted waters so to speak now i want to offer some words of encouragement for anybody who is invested right now I do believe that if the ship is going to sink, it's going to sink, all right? So there's not a whole hell of a lot you can do about that. Your 401k, you might as well kiss it goodbye. But I do think that this may just be a pretty sizable correction, and we're likely to skip off the bottom. But there's a chance that it isn't. There's a chance that we bounce down the staircase and that this is just the beginning. And I would say... If we get a couple more down weeks like this, then I don't know what the technical uh, measure is for a recession. It's the last how many trading sessions in decline. I think it's something to the effect of, what is it? Like, uh, I don't even know. I mean, begin to speculate on that. I think it's something like a, a month or so or two months, three months of a downward trend in the markets is what constitutes a recession. There's an actual measure for it. I don't know it off the top of my head. I know that there is one. Is that going to become an actual depression? And then there's the other deception in there is that even if we do trade sideways in the markets for the next 10 years, how much is the currency actually gonna be worth? Is the recession going to be a hidden recession or is it going to be a hidden depression? Is the value of the currency going to be halved while the price of these various stocks stays the same? Okay, there's a couple ways this could go. The market could crash up. The market could crash up if there is rapid hyperinflation and everybody thinks, yeah, we're getting rich again, but really your money is just getting worthless and that's why the valuation of the markets is going up because the dollar is now worth 25 cents. So sure, your stock portfolio doubled, but your currency is only worth 25% of what it once was. So it's all, an, all a delusion, an illusion, I should say. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out.